The Port Authority of New York and New Jersey did not respond to our repeated request for comment about that cell phone video. Elaine, there are just three airports across the country, Miami, Orlando, and Atlanta, that have instituted 100% employees screening, screening for IDs and bags. Well, Jeff, with all this focus on security and passenger screening, how did employee screening seemingly slip through the cracks? Well, there's just been a change in focus over the years, and now with the threats that uh, aviation security experts are seeing across the globe with the Metro jet uh, crash that took place last year, as well as uh, incidents in Somalia with laptop bombs, uh, there is now this renewed focus, if you will, on the insider threat. It's something that's always been there that aviation security officials have been concerned about, but now it's front and center because of the atmosphere overseas. Jeff, what kinds of things does the TSA need to do to close this gap in security? Well, I think what you're going to see is what we're seeing at those three airports that I mentioned, Miami, Orlando, and Atlanta. Uh, there is 100% screening of employees at those airports, uh, and what that means are fewer entry points for employees as they come to work so that their IDs can be verified and their bags checked. So it's similar to what you see at the passenger security checkpoints, where there are fewer entryways as you head to the gates uh, so that the people going through can be screened thoroughly. What about members of Congress? Where do members of Congress stand on this issue? Well, this is interesting because what we're hearing is there has been legislation that passed the House that would address some of these insider threat issues, but it's being held up in the Senate. There was a lot of talk about that today at this hearing. All right, Jeff Pegues for us. Jeff, thank you so much.